What's up guys, Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So the last time we left off, I think we implemented our uh, find next C or find next checkpoint method. Uh, as you can see, our guys here aren't very smart, but I have a feeling that by the end of this video or maybe the next one, depending on how quick this goes by, uh, we should have our enemies fully operational and making their way through the maze. So that's exciting. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're going to implement a method to populate this list of checkpoints. So we, we made this array list, which is pretty much just a list of checkpoints that our enemies are gonna go through, right? Um, but we never did anything with it. We just kind of named it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go right at the bottom of our constructor here, right above our update method, and we're gonna initialize it. So this dot, oh, we already did. Didn't realize that up here. I was gonna say we should type this, this dot checkpoints equals new array list of checkpoint, but we already did that. So the next thing we're going to do is go to, or I guess the first thing we're going to do is make another integer and it's going to be called current checkpoint. And this is going to keep track of what step along the way from the beginning of the end or the beginning to the end of the maze that we're at right now. So we're going to initialize that at the bottom of our constructor and say this dot current checkpoint equals zero because we're starting on the zero with checkpoint. So now we're going to make a new method and I'm just going to call it, we're going to get a private void. Um, hmm. I'm just going to name it populate checkpoint list. Very specific because we don't need to call it more than once. So why not have a long specific name so we know exactly what it does. So we're going to run this uh, right below where we set our current checkpoint integer. I'm just going to say populate checkpoint list. So this is going to go through and fill the entire list of checkpoints with each turn in the maze, and then we're going to pass that to our enemies so that they know uh, what to do. So for populate checkpoint list, the first thing we're going to do is, hmm, well, the first checkpoint here, you know, maybe this would be easier if we go to the boot class first, and we have our guys spawning, I believe, like right here, or right here, if you have the same setup as me. If not, now would probably be a good time to kind of get similar to what I'm doing because we're going to be working directly with the maze. So I know you guys may have made like custom levels or not. Just try and like save those in Notepad and get something similar to what we're working with here so it's easier to follow along. Um, but pretty much what the important part is is that we're, we're, have, we're having a large map of one tile type. So in my case, it's grass. And then we're going to start working with an actual path. So just make sure you have a path that goes preferably from left to right, just so we can debug together and make sure everything's working properly. And then have our enemies spawn on that path. So right now they're spawning too low. So I'm gonna bring him up from 10 to eight on the Y axis and see, all right, perfect. Now they're spawning on this actual dirt path. So we can test that. And I'm gonna make it loop up here, do a little turn and just make sure that they can properly make the turns once we implement these methods. So back in the enemy class, uh, the first thing we need to do uh, is we're going to actually add, we're going to make a while loop and kind of keep checking until we've gotten every checkpoint in the maze added to the uh, array list. But the first one, we can't really do that because the first one isn't based on our previous checkpoint or position. It's based on our starting tile. So if you'll recall, we're, we're sending a specific start tile to the enemy where it spawns at. So in our populate checkpoint list method, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the first checkpoint, which is based on our start tile that we sent. So checkpoints, oops, checkpoints, which is the name of our array list, dot add. We're adding a new checkpoint because it's empty right now. And we're going to use our method find next C. So that's the method that we coded together to find our next checkpoint. And inside of it, we're going to pass what we need. Oh, it's right here. We need a tile, and then we need an integer array for the x and y directions. So for the tile, that's going to be start tile. And then for the directions, what we're going to do, we're going to do something a little sneaky here. We're going to set our directions, which is the current enemy directions, uh, which we have right up here, equal to something while passing in the variable. So we haven't done this before yet. So if you're following along and you're not super familiar with Java, then this will be a new concept. But we're going to say directions equals, and we're going to use our other method we made, find next d. And we made that down here below the find next C, and that just takes a tile. So we're just gonna pass in the start tile and then that. 
So what we're doing here to be more specific is we're taking our array list of checkpoints. So our list of all the turns in the map that the enemy is going to need to know when to stop and what direction to turn. And we're adding a new one. In this case, it's the very first one. And to do that, we're going to use our method called findNextC, which we coded last time to find where the next checkpoint is from our current position. But because this one isn't like any other current checkpoint, it's the very first one, we have nothing to base it off of. Because as you can see in our method here, we're sending a tile to it, and we can't send the same tile as our very first time as everything else because we have no previous data to go off of. So we're sending our start tile in this instance, and then we're sending it directions for x and y, and to get those directions, we're getting it from our method we made, our find next D, which also takes a tile, and we're passing it back to this method. So this equal sign, it can be pretty much ignored as far as this method is concerned. It doesn't even look at this, this whole part right here. We're just saying we also want to set our directions equal to what we find from this method here. So we could just as easily have that and it would work fine as long as we also say we wanted our directions to be equal to find next D at start tile. It's just a way to combine those into one line and make it simpler. So I'm going to go back and leave it like we had it. So now we're going to make a while loop to go through every other checkpoint. So the first one was a special case and now we're going to loop through and find the rest of them. So int counter, we're going to do something similar to how we uh, did the last method. Counter equals zero, which is our little thing we're going to increment. And boolean continue equal, oh, right, I can't do that. We'll say cont equals true. If you're curious, continue is a protected word. See how it turns purple like that? It's because it's actually a term in Java, so we can't name our variables that. So boolean cont equals true. And then we're going to say while cont. We're going to do all our stuff in here. So this is similar to how I set it up last time. It's not the most efficient, and we're probably going to go back and replace it at some point, but it's just easy to demonstrate that as long as we're continuing to search, then we're going to keep this true. And then when we find what we're looking for, we're going to set to false and stop the while loop. Just an easy way to kind of set that up. So in our while loop, we're going to want to go through the rest of the uh, checkpoints here. So the way we're going to do that is by using our findNextC method. I think you guys are going to be surprised at how helpful these findNextC and findNextD methods are going to be because it's going to save us a lot of coding. So I know it was kind of a pain to code them in the first place, but they're actually going to be super helpful to us. So first we should check if we're at the very end of the checkpoints left. So in our findNextD method, we have an else here. So we're saying, you know, if you can't go up and you can't go right, you can't go down, you can't go left, right now we're just printing out no direction found. But what we should also do is we should actually make that clear to whatever method we're calling this from. Because right now it's just printing. And so the computer can't tell that we're done. Only we can, because we're going to be reading that. What we're doing is setting, oops, dir at zero equal to negative one and dir at one equal to negative one. That way when we call this, you know, we see here like if the x is equal to zero and the y is equal to negative one, that means we're going up and you know, so on and so forth. If they're both equal to negative one, yeah, actually that's not gonna work, I just realized because we're using negative one. We should set it to two. So two is something that would never ever occur between all these other instances. So now we can check if we get two back, that means that there's no direction found and we shouldn't be relying on the data we get from that. So let's go back up to our populate checkpoint list and inside our while loop, we're gonna say int an integer array of current D equals find the next D at checkpoints dot get index of I. Don't we need a tile for that? Find next D start tile checkpoints dot get I. Why doesn't that let me get a tile from that? What if I just typed it out? See what the error is. Oh, because then I make silly me. All right, instead of I, it should be counter. I used to name it I. All right, so we're getting our direction using our find next D method, and we're getting it for the current checkpoint we're at right now. One second. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. So we're setting current D equal to 
find next direction at checkpoints.get counter, which is where we're at right now, dot get tile. And then we're gonna check if current D and zero, so for the X, is equal to two. And we're gonna set cont equal to false, continue equal to false. So that's the thing we just implemented there where if the find next direction, find next D, can't find where else to go, it probably means that we shouldn't be still looking for checkpoints. It probably means that we're at the very end of the, the route or the maze that they're traveling on. And so we're gonna stop looping through this while loop. Else, meaning there is a next direction, we're going to add a checkpoint to our checkpoints list. So find next C. And for this, we need a tile, which would be checkpoints dot get high dot, I keep doing I, I'm sorry guys, dot get counter dot get tile. And we need a direction. So I'm just gonna return to this next line here because it's gonna get kind of long. The direction is directions equals find next d at checkpoints dot get counter dot get tile why well, is that not working that have enough there we go it's a lot of parentheses so we added a new checkpoint to our array list of checkpoints here and we're in a while loop, so that's gonna keep going over and over and over until we've found all the checkpoints where eventually we'll come to a point where we can't find the next direction. So meaning the direction of the next checkpoint from where we're currently checking. And so it's gonna return two from the find next D method. When that happens, we're gonna break out of the while loop. But until that happens, we're gonna keep looping through and based on the counter, which we should increment right here, it's gonna keep getting higher and higher, so we're gonna keep checking for the next checkpoint over and over and over. Okay? So we're gonna go back and uh, comment through all this because it's a lot to digest at once, but I think uh, if you look over it and with the comments, it should make sense, hopefully. It is pretty complicated. Definitely the most complicated stuff we've written so far. Um, but I think that ends our popular checkpoint list method. So all we actually need to do is implement one last method to check if our enemy has reached the next checkpoint or not. And then we should have a completely autonomous enemy that navigates itself through the maze. Um, but this has already gone on long enough and I imagine that the, the next method will probably take almost as long. So I'm gonna break it up and uh, we'll cover that next episode. Uh, one last thing I wanted to say before I end this is that I'm planning on continuing this series, this Java game programming series, on a new channel in the future. So I'm not sure if that'll be the next episode. It probably won't. I'll probably have one more episode after this one on Cross Coast Gaming. And then at the end of that episode, the annotation will link you to the, you know, continuing the series, but it'll start being on a new channel. I've wanted to do that for a while as Cross Coast Gaming is kind of more focused on actual, uh, like, reviews and, like, videos inside of, like, AAA titles and games and stuff like that. You guys have probably noticed if you're subscribed to the channel. Um, so I'm just going to be moving this programming series over to a new channel, but nothing else is going to change other than that. As far as this programming series is concerned, it's just on a new channel, its own little area. And I might do different programming series as well, since I'll have my entire channel to kind of do that with. But, uh, yeah, just a heads up so you guys aren't completely blindsided when that happens. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.